Hey guys and welcome back to a new video and a new episode of Philips Android News. This is the format where I go over all most important changes of the past month that affect us Android developers, summarize them here in a digestible format for you, so you only need to watch this once a month to know what changed, what is important, and what might make sense to focus on a little bit more in detail. And this episode is for May 2024, in which I will summarize everything that happened back in April. And I can already say there are some pretty cool changes in this episode. And before we get started, just a little reminder that until Sunday, you can still get 25% discount on all my courses and bundles, including the new one, which teaches you all fundamentals about software and Android development. Link in this video's description. So as a first topic for this episode of Android News, we have the first beta of Android 15 that is available. So in the past Android news episodes, I went over the first two developer preview versions of Android 15, and now the first beta version was released to the public, or at least to us developers. And this new beta version again brings some cool new changes. First of all, starting from Android 15, Edge to Edge is now the default. What is Edge to Edge? Well, Edge to Edge means that your app content will be shown behind the system bars by default. Normally we have our system bar at the top where you see all your notifications and normally the app's content is cropped so that it is not shown behind that system bar unless you explicitly configure it that way. That was possible with the set decor system windows function, but starting from Android 15, it will be the default. What does that mean for you? That means you need to deal with that, of course, because if you would, for example, just include a text on your layout by default without any further setup, then it would be hidden behind the system bars. And in order to properly deal with that, you either need to use the appropriate Material 3 composables, which just calculate in that offset, or you get into so-called window insets. So those can be used to actually retrieve these offsets to apply them to your composables and therefore also have a UI that looks decent and does not uh, get hidden behind the system bars. Then the next change that Android 15 brings is that apps can now be archived. So that means if users have specific apps they don't use very frequently, they can now archive these apps. So the app and the caches of this app is deleted, but the user data is kept. So user data would, for example, be things you store in shared preferences or a local room database. So that is kept, that is relevant for the user when they might reinstall the app so they can just resume wherever they left. And this will also be possible to do from within a specific app. So if you maybe code some kind of clean up app, which allows users to just clean up resources on the device, to delete apps, to archive apps, to maybe uh, clear the device's RAM or so, then you can now also request the new permission request delete packages in order to archive installed apps. Another very cool change that comes with Android 15 is that we now have an in-app profiling API. And this, I think, is pretty cool when you want to get some additional analytics when it comes to debugging weird behavior on your app. So maybe you know the profiler which we have in Android Studio, which lets us inspect the app's memory usage and then also inspect that at very specific time frames to see maybe which objects consume how much memory in our app, which memory allocations might cause big problems in our code at a very specific time. And all that was possible, but only from within Android Studio. So you had to run your app, you had to connect the profiler and then gather that data while your app's process is running within Android Studio. But that will start to be possible as an in-app feature. So without needing Android Studio, you can still collect things like heap dumps from your app at a specific time and then save these into a local file on your device and maybe send these to your analytics servers or so. Another last change regarding Android 15 that I consider worth to be talked about is that there will be some more restrictions regarding starting activities from the background. So that already started with Android uh, version 10, I think, where Google started to make it harder to launch activities from the background. Maybe if you're running a service in your app and tried to launch a specific activity from within that service, and now they announced that there will be more such restrictions just in order to prevent malware from launching uh, malicious activities. But at at this point, Google is not very open regarding in how far it will be restricted more. So that maybe the next Android News episode will show. If you already want to try this new Android 15 beta, then you can of course do that on the one hand by installing the Android 15 emulator image, which is the most straightforward way and the, the easiest way to get to this new version. Or you can also download it online and install it on any Pixel device if you have one. So that is also an option if you want to try it on a real device. Next up, there are very cool new changes announced for Android Studio Jellyfish. Fish. Jellyfish is currently not stable, but it will be the next Android Studio version after Iguana, which is currently the stable version. And it seems like we will get a very close integration of AI of Gemini Pro into Android Studio. So in an earlier video, I already went over Android Studio's new Studio Bot, which is pretty much a ChatGPT integrated inside of Android Studio, which at this point really sucked, to be honest. And from what I've heard, still sucks. But that is only one part that will be integrated in Android Studio by default, starting from Jellyfish. So that AI 
AI assistant just allows you to ask Android questions um, to provide context to your code base directly. So really just like an embedded chat GPT you can think of running on the Gemini Pro AI from Google. But what I'm actually more excited about is that we will get AI code completion or rather an AI code companion. So something like GitHub Copilot, but from Google and directly integrated inside of Android Studio. And this AI code companion again, similar to GitHub Copilot, will try to predict what type of code you're actually typing and then allows you to easily autocomplete that. At this point, I have no idea how good that will be. I've heard from people using such AI code companions like Copilot who really like them and really use them for their day-to-day -day work. And I've been hearing people who only complain about these companions uh, because they introduce more issues than they actually solve. So that only the stable version will show, but I'm very excited about that. And what's maybe interesting to mention about this AI companion and especially this AI you can ask questions, that might always be a little bit of a problem when you're maybe working in a company or as a contractor and you sign an NDA, so you are not allowed to share specific code with external servers, like the server running behind the Gemini AI, then Android Studio will not by default provide context to your code to this AI companion, but if you want so, you can grant it. And you can even add a new AI exclude file, which is comparable to gitignore, where you specify which files the AI should not actually take as a context reference and should not scan and therefore also not send to their servers. All right, that's it about the new things about Jellyfish, but there is more to come. As a next change, I want to talk about something we can Post lovers have all been waiting for for a very long time. We finally have shared element transitions in Jetpack Compose in the official version. No library is needed except for the normal Compose animations one. So with shared element transitions, you can just animate the transition from one screen to another if they share some type of element like an image to make it transition into maybe a bigger image that is still the same on the second screen. And if you want me to inspect this library for you and make a tutorial about it, then let me know that in the comments. And last but not least, a change I would like to talk about, and that is a Kotlin multi-platform related change that from now on in Kotlin multi-platform, we now have a Jetpack view model. So everybody who tried Kotlin multi-platform before knows the struggle when we try to share UI state mapping logic which you usually put in a view model on Android, between iOS and Android. That was possible, there were some libraries, but it always felt really hacky. But now with this official new library from JetBrains directly, we can use Jetpack view model. So this will work on Android just out of the box, and we can share the code in our Kotlin multi-platform shared section. This is experimental for now, it is in alpha, and the docs from JetBrains also say that this will work out of the box for Android and desktop, but on iOS and web, you will need to provide some factories in order to create these view model references. But nevertheless, I think KMP is actually going into a very promising direction, definitely something I'm looking forward to much more than Flutter. Because we Android developers in the end will be able to build two apps that work out of the box, with only very minimal individual code for each platform. And that individual code that we have can be written natively directly in our code base without any ugly plugins like on Flutter. So if you also want me to make a tutorial about that new Jetpack view model for KMP, let me know that down below as well. All right, and this was it for this month's episode of Philips Android News, but soon there will actually be Google I.O. in May. So that is a yearly event by Google where they announce a lot of new changes for Google products, including Android, of course. So depending on what will be announced there, I might make a special episode for that. So thank you for watching. Again, 25% discount down below, first link. This will expire on Sunday. And then all my courses, bundles, and new course prices will rise again and not be discounted anytime soon. Happy learning, thanks for watching, and I wish you an amazing rest of your week. See you back in the next video. Bye-bye.